Hey everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Uh, the other day I was scrolling Instagram and I stumbled across a really cool effect that someone did using Boris FX Optics. Today, I want to show you that effect. It's kind of a gobo effect. You'll have an image that looks like this and once you add the effect, you could have an image that looks like this. Unlike my previous videos on Boris FX Optics where I used it as a plugin, today we're going to use it as a standalone application because there is a feature of the standalone app that I want to demo. Now, first we need to get an image into it. So I'm going to go up to File and I'm going to go to Open. And on my desktop I have a couple stock images. I'm going to go with that first one and we'll click Open. Now I had mentioned at the top that I was scrolling through Instagram and I stumbled across someone using this effect and I thought it was an interesting effect that many photographers may want to take advantage of. The effect is under the light category and the actual effect is also called light. So we'll click on that and you can see that you get this kind of Venetian blind look over the image. This of course is something that you most often would do with existing light. You need a good window though with Venetian blinds or vertical blinds or some type of nice looking window to give you this effect. You of course could use this with a modifier on a strobe and imitate the effect, but it's super easy to do in Boris FX Optics in post-production. Now by default when I put it on, it put this straight Venetian blind look. But if you look over at the presets, you can see there's all different types of presets. I mean, you have these abstract looks you could place over uh, the, the uh, model in this case. You have these different window looks with different window panes. You have like branches of trees, stuff like that. You have just concrete stones, more windows. These are curved windows. Again, there's just dozens, dozens, all these different abstract looks you could use. Um, stuff, I don't know, just go through and find a window you like. In this case, this is what I want to go for. I don't want to use any of the other um, non-window presets. I just want to come in and find a window. Now in the background it has vertical blinds, so maybe I want to stay with something that's vertical. Um, I'm sure if I went through here long enough, I'd find something that like this one is similar to the ones in the back. So let's go with that. Once you pick your preset that you're going to use, you could change or affect each of the parameters of that preset by clicking on the parameters tab. Now many times with these effects, uh, the titles for the sliders and the drop downs won't really be intuitive. So really what you'll need to do is just move them. So displacement, you see kind of kind of bends it around a little bit and doesn't it's not as square once you do you know you do some moving here of a slider and you decide you didn't like what you did if you just want to reset it back to its default position there's a little square over here on the far right just click on that and you'll be able to do it um, so on the titles for the sliders and drop downs for the light um, presets seem to be more straightforward than some of the others so this isn't too bad here, but what I want to do is I want to make it larger. So I'm going to move this scale up, kind of like, maybe like that. Or maybe I'll just do it so it's more like that. And I think I want to blur it a bit more, so I'll go to blur up here. Now you have two different types of blur, actually. You could blur the light. So this is the actual white part you could blur. You can see far left, it's very defined. And blur it like that. Also down here, there's another blur, and this is, they call it for the gobo part. This is the actual darker part of the effect, and you could blur that as well. And you can see that one's maybe a little more subtle, so we'll move that as well. And I think that looks pretty cool as it is. So once you're satisfied with everything, this is where this feature that is unique to the standalone version of Boris FX Optics comes into play. When you save it, if you save it as a TIFF file and you have this option turned on, it's kind of like a smart layer in Photoshop in that 
Um, if you find down the road that you want to readjust something, like you may want, want to make this larger or smaller or change the effect to a different preset, you'll be able to do that. So we're going to go, oops, I didn't want to do that. So we're going to go up to File, and we're going to go to, to Save As. And it only is when you save it as a TIFF file, all right? So it doesn't work when you save it as a JPEG. So I'm going to save it as a TIFF, and I'm just going to call it Test, all right? We'll click Save, and you'll see that this TIFF Options box comes up. First of all, Compression. Um, if you have a smaller hard drive and you want to you know, use a smaller or save a smaller file, use compression, but I recommend you use the LZW compression over the zip compression. I found LZW works better with TIFF files. Um, for, my, for this instance, I'm not going to use any compression. Now this embed ICC profile, you may not always get that uh, showing up here. It really depends on the image itself. Here, you could just embed the ICC profile, but what I'm talking about, the feature I'm referring to where it will save all this info is save setup with image. Just click OK. Now, once you do that, let me close this down and let's open it up. Let's reopen it. So we're going to go to open and we're going to go to that test.tiff and open it up. And you can see there's our effect. And if I go to parameters, you could see that it used that same shutters 11. It's got the same settings. The sliders, I move them as I, you know, the, to where I move them are there. So I could come back in and readjust something if I find I want to readjust something. So maybe I want to make it bigger. So then I could just come up and save it like that. Again, we're going to save it as a test tip. We're going to replace it. And this comes up, save setup with image. You see that uh, ICC profile is missing. So we'll just save it, click OK, and we saved it. All right, let's do one more real quick, just so I could show you a little more of the adjustments themselves. Close that. We'll go up to File, Open, and there's another stock image here. We'll open this one. And uh, again, I'm going to go to the Light category, use that Light effect, and it puts this Venetian Blind one on by default. And let's just go with that. Let's go with that. We'll go to Parameters now. And again, as I said before, sometimes you might not really know what these do so you just try it out now output means you're seeing what the effect looks like on the image if you go to matte you're just going to see the effect without any image so there is the actual matte the effect the gobo is the same thing all right so we're going to go to output obviously that's what we want to see uh, how do we want to blend it you could just try these see screen doesn't seem as well defined subtract is opposite i don't like that one so we're going to go to add sorry add and brightness, um, maybe it's kind of a low key shot. So I don't want these, this to be too bright. So I'll bring it down. Now displacement, again, you kind of warp it. I don't think I want to do that though. So we're going to reset that. Uh, blur, this is the light blur. So we're blurring out the light. So we'll move that to our taste. That Again, if you're not sure, just reset it. I'll reset that. Gang, whenever you have a gang checkbox, if you uncheck it, you'll see you'll get uh, a couple horizontal, you get two sliders, horizontal and vertical. So basically, instead of having one slider for displacement here, or for blur, I'm sorry, you'll have two. So you could blur it out horizontally and vertically independent of one another. So you could reset those, click, click gang, even reset it. So you could come through gels. Do you want to give it kind of a tint? Uh, let's say I give it a, a lily tint, uh, you know, something like that. If you don't want to use any of the presets, you can click on the little eyedropper. And with the eyedropper, just sample a color in the image. I'll sam sample her skin tone. If I don't like that, click on the eyedropper again. I could s sample her lips like that. If you prefer, you could just click on the color swatch. And when you do that, you'll get a color picker. And with the color picker, you could come in and pick a specific color and then click OK and it will use that color. In this case, I'm just going to use none. I liked it the way it was. Uh, the shadow. How defined do you want that shadow? That's what that does. Now the gobo itself. This is the actual effect. Um, this is the specific preset we're using. Shutter's 10. Uh, we're going to, what blend mode? Let's see what add looks like. You just go through again and try them out. So I'm not going to belabor this. There is the blur for the gobo itself. This is a little more subtle maybe than the other blur, so we'll blur it a little more. 
I also want to uh, move it. You could just grab this center pin. I don't want any of the um, darker parts of the effect over her eyes. I want her eyes in the lighter part, so like that. So I could just move it right here. You, of course, could then come in and move some of the transform tools to move it around. Um, different things you could do. You could rotate it. You could shear it horizontally. Just, you know, there's so many adjustments. Filter and so on. Um, sometimes you'll get something like this. You can see this is all grayed out, the matte area, so you won't be able to affect this. This will only come alive when maybe a different drop, a different blend mode is used or maybe a different filter is used. Uh, so it depends. You'd have to come in and, and try different things and see if something makes this come alive and then you could move that as well. But let's just say that I kind of like that. If you want to see a before after, go over here on the layer itself. Click on this little lightning bolt. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So there is a really cool lighting effect that is in Boris FX Optics that I think many people may want to use. Um, if you use any different lighting effects or you do any effects in Boris FX Optics, I'd like to see them because it will give me ideas for future videos. So if you post them to Instagram, tag me on, the, on it. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to my Instagram so you could follow me and tag me on anything that you are really proud of that you've done with Boris FX Optics. Also, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to a playlist. I'll have all my Boris FX Optics um, videos in that playlist so you could find them and watch them at your leisure. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>